What's up guys and gals and welcome back to the Nerd Castle. Today in the world of indie games, we're going to be taking a look at Hellslave. This is a somewhat first person, like not really. So it's basically a dungeon crawler. All right, this is a dungeon crawler that is approached from a demonology angle. You are a warrior or a mage or a rogue who is a offense you've effectively sold your soul to the dark powers in exchange for the ability to destroy monsters and do all kinds of crazy stuff. I don't know how the storyline is going to resolve, but the game is tremendously grimdark and really sort of leans into that edgy heavy metal aura that it's got going on. And then it tops the whole thing off with the frosting of just fantastically well-designed animations and graphics. Uh, the game is really, really pretty. Whoever the artist is for this game has definite chops and it shows like the entire game kind of drips with almost sort of this evil style, I guess, to it. Lots of thick ink lines, lots of darkness, lots of deep reds and pinks and things of that nature. We checked out a demo for this game during a Steam Festival probably four or five months ago, but the full game is actually coming out this week so that you can check it on out. Now, this game is not an early access, so it's going to be finished at the time of the publishing of this video. So we're going to check it out for about 25-30 minutes today and see if it's something you wanted to add to your wish list or otherwise pass on. I've already played for about 30 or 45 minutes, and I do have some thoughts about the way the game is arranged. There's really only one major critique I have about the game, and it's pretty much exactly the same as the critique that I levied inside of the demo. Unfortunately, that didn't get fixed, and it's kind of like a sticking point for me, but we'll talk about it a little bit later. Uh, we are going to go from the top, because the last time we checked out the game, a significant proportion of it was not translated. And so anyways, we missed out on a bunch of storyline elements and things of that nature when we checked out the demo because like it was about 50 50 English 50 50 French but the translation is done now so the intro portion should make a lot more sense and we should be able to flow through it pretty quickly if I have to so that we get to new content what I'll do is I'll cut the video a little bit longer that way you can see some new stuff too that wasn't inside that old demo video but for right now let's go ahead and dive straight on in if after watching this you wanted to get the game for yourself you can check down below for a link I will have that for you then on top of that there will also be a link to my discord in my Twitch stream just in case you wanted to hang out live. We'll play the game on normal difficulty and we'll do a little bit of cinematic loving. The peaceful valley of Navlath. Season after season the world kept on turning. Sometimes hard under the sun and rain. A harsh but fair life. Laying here suspended in time, up until that night when everything changed. A rumbling came from the ground, broke the silence, and some infernal beasts came from the bowels of the earth. They descended upon us. Village after village, killing women and children. Galvanized by the rage of hell and resistance was futile. Some died and some fled. Orphaned and dead without a burial. All hope was gone. What could we do? They were backed by the infernal forces and killed anybody that refused to join them. No mortal could defeat them. I could see only one outcome. There, struck down by despair, should I want to fight fire with fire, I had to sell my soul to the devil. Alright, so here we are. This is actually the way the entire game is going to be arranged. You kind of have these scenescapes that the developers have put out there for you that are actually quite detailed and beautiful. I actually really enjoy the color palette and the way that they've selected uh, the various scenes upon which the game takes place. Let's go ahead and talk to this guy. Anytime you see these rotating kind of balls right here, I know. It's, it's a risk of the job that I'm going to put something out there and say that we have to click on rotating balls. And I just have to expect that you guys aren't going to run with that, but it is what it is. The nature of the job. Welcome among us, young recruit. You will not regret your choice. You must forget all about your past. Choose a new name. 
and tell me which demon you wish to swear allegiance to. Alright, so at the beginning of the game we get to do some character customization, and I think this has changed around a little bit from the last time we played the game. I'm just gonna go with Splattercat right there. My last character, you may have noticed, was named Fart, okay? I'm not being immature, it means fast in Swedish, okay? Uh, we get to pick what face we look like. I do like the head tattoos right there. I'm gonna take those. Do we have any, like, we got some glowing green eyes right there? I can dig that. We can be, like, bald. We can have, like, oh, I kind of dig that right there, like the thicker on top thing. A couple of different beards we can play around with as well. Do we have, like, a big imperial beard? There we go. That's the one right there. Perfect. That's the beard of a man with a jutting powerful chin and murder on his mind. Look, we've already got blood splatter all over our tummy. Either that or it's mom's spaghetti. We can pick different skin colors. All of the skin colors in this game are kind of like Doug inspired. Uh, it's part of the art style of the game. I'll probably go with that one right there. I think that goes pretty good. And then you can pick your hair color, everything from, you know, old to young to black to white. Whatever you feel like makes your character look the coolest. For right now, I think that red makes it look the best, so I'm going to go with that. And then we can also pick our physique and how buff we want to be. doesn't really matter because this ragdoll right here is going to be covered with gear and armor and necklaces and things of that nature. So you're pretty much never going to see the shelf-like clavicled shoulders and trapezius muscles of your character, but still, they are there beneath the armor in case that matters. Uh, I do like the UI in this game. I think it looks really, really great. It's very stylized. Uh, it's very, very kind of decorative. Uh, it reminds me of old RPGs from long, long ago in the Ultima days, something that I dearly miss. Uh, but we can pick from a number of different devils that we can work for. We can go for Lucifer, physical combat and the power of light. We can go for Beelzebub, infernal anger, physical power and rage. We can go with Baal, the master of shadows and poison. We can go with Satan, the anti-prince of hell, a warrior of chaos who dances between the realms of life and death. We can go with Asmodeus, a melee fighter who feeds on suffering. Or we can go with Leviathan, the blind beast guided by cosmic energies and the god of wizards. I'll probably go with, like, I don't really, honestly, no. Maybe we'll go with, I honestly, you know what, let's go with Satan! Let's keep this, like, maximum heavy metal right here. Very well. You seem nervous. You must be shaking with imp impatience. Drink this mixture and step into the circle and I will prepare the final ritual. Everything is ready. Come. Join us. How are you feeling? Very well. What are you? I've been stabbed. Can't back off now. If I have to lose my soul, then so be it. Alright, so this is the world map right here. The game is semi-open world. There's going to be points of interest and things around that you can go to, uh, but in general, you're going to right-click to just kind of ride around the map and do your quests and your various RPG activities using the power of the devil. The power of the great and unstoppable foosball. Uh, for right now, I'm going to click around, and instead of going through this, because we've already seen all this dialogue in the demo video that we played a couple of months ago, I'm just going to click through it all, and we'll go do the first dungeon, and we'll kind of knock that out just to make this thing expedient. Basically, we arrive in this town, everything is going wrong, there's demons everywhere, and we've got to go check a crypt to see if a guy's nephew died while he was inside of a crypt. Okay, so having gathered up the quests that are available inside of town right now, we can go through the UI. We've got our HP, we've got our MP, and we've got our Rage. Uh, these are all used for various things in combat. This game does have kind of like a, almost a JRPG combat, I guess. It's like first person. The best thing that I can kind of liken it to is something like Fantasy Star 4. 
but instead of looking at the backs of all your characters, you're looking through the main character's eyes as you're fighting monsters in the dungeon. It is turn-based, but it incorporates kind of a time system, uh, like something you would have seen from like Star Renegades or something like Grandia, I guess, is another thing to compare it to where it's got kind of a timeline push-pull that you're playing around with in combat, but we'll explore that a little bit later. Let's go ahead and hit the exit, and we've got to go to the Tomba of Heroes. All right, so we can right-click around, and this is honestly my major sticking point for the game right here. This is the thing that I don't like about it. I like so much of the rest of the package of this game in that it's very unique. There's not a lot of games that are about demonology and selling your soul to the devil in order to get revenge and having demon powers and turning into, you know, like a, a giant winged demon as like your limit break and whatnot. But, like, this is the one thing that I dislike about this game. For whatever reason, when you're inside of a dungeon, and I don't know if they've done this for a reason, because later on maps are going to be much larger. I doubt it, though, because if you look very closely, you can see the edges right here where it's letterboxed. Uh, but anyways, I don't understand why they didn't take this dungeon map and just stretch it to fill the screen. Like, there's a lot of lost screen real estate, and I'm really, really hoping that there's a reason that they've done this that I just am not privy to because I haven't gotten far enough, far enough into the game. But for whatever reason, this is very small and hard to see. And they did, like, these dungeon layouts, and I feel like at the bare minimum, they could have made it quite a bit larger. And I talked about that in the demo, and for whatever reason, it just never got fixed. I mean, they honestly didn't even need to stretch it. They could have just given the player the ability to zoom in and zoom out on this right here. And when you zoom in, it just moves towards the borders uh, along with the aspect ratio, but they didn't do that. Uh, so anyways, the dungeons in this game are very, very small, and I wish they were either zoomable or I wish they were stretched to fill the entire screen because the rest of the action of the game does indeed fill the rest of the screen. And so it's a very, very odd design choice that, like, I'm hoping I'm just missing the rationale of. Uh, we'll go over to this side. On the right, a gate is blocking your way down into the necropolis. You require a key. Okay, so we'll cut off to the left. On the left, the corridor leads to the ceremonial room. The artwork is just utterly fantastic in this game, though. It's a very, very good-looking game. There is a demonic shrine. We will pray to it. May the powers of the devil! I need more heavy metal guitar. Uh, we can summon Baal. He will lend his shadow to those who have near death. We can summon Lucifer, the fallen angel, doesn't give his blessing to the weak and the maimed. Or we can summon Bareth, who gives second breath to the exhausted. I guess we'll just go with old Lucy. There we go. What did that do for me? The fallen angel doesn't give his blessing to the weak and the maimed. So he has given us plus 10% armor for the rest of the dungeon. Nice. Uh, these little icons turn red after you interact with them. It looks like we ran into a random fight inside the dungeon. And so we'll go ahead and skip all this tutorializing because I know what I'm doing here. Uh, so basically, let me explain combat to you. It's very, very simple. There's a timeline at the top of the screen. This is my icon. This is the enemy's icon. When it reaches the left, you initiate whatever action it is you have on deck. And various actions are balanced by how far back they push you on the timeline, basically. Uh, we have the first move to do a close-range melee attack. Uh, but unfortunately, the enemy dodged us. And so it looks like we have now been debuffed and we will gain more fatigue, which means that it takes longer for our actions to go off. A little bit of a bummer right there, not the greatest thing. If you're wondering what that little diamond is right there, every single time the diamond goes to the left-hand side of the track, we get a rage point or like a demon point or something like that. I think is what it is anyways. I'm not super sure. Or maybe it's the beginning of a new round. I've been kind of watching it trying to decide. And sometimes it seems to coincide with me getting a demon point, and then other times it doesn't. But there we go. We've leveled up. Uh, we can choose an infernal favor for every single battle that we conclude. This is a new thing that I think was not inside the demo. Basically, these are temporary buffs that you get for the remainder of the dungeon, but they don't last for the rest of your character's career. And so we can have Faith of the Damned. That'll give us minor mana regeneration. We can get Mental Conditioning, which increases the amount of mana we get back at the end of a fight. I'll probably just take that one right there. So we got plus three mana. And then we get loot. Everything is very well animated in this game. I like the way that it looks. The loot follows kind of like a Diablo-esque design where you never quite know what you're going to get out. Our character has equipped these pants right here. 
as you can see. So the rag doll or the paper doll that they've given you for your character does reflect the equipment that you have equipped. That's a check in a box for me. I like that very much. Uh, we could equip one of these disciples wands right here, but we're not really a mage. We've also got a studded club that flatly does more damage than what we have, and it's got a 30% chance of slowing down our target's timeline. So we'll go ahead and use that for just a minute. You can destroy this equipment, but I'm going to hold on to it until we get back to town so that we can sell it. Raucous noises resonate through the room, and you could swear that they're coming from the tomb. Alright, so we now have the ability to cast magic in this fight. Magic goes off much quicker, but the balancing mechanism for that is that magic costs you MP. So as you can see right here, I can put myself before this guy in the timeline so that I can activate another ability if I want to including casting another magic spell. Since we do have a lot of magic regeneration, I'm just going to go for it, and then we'll club this guy. There we go. Actually, I think that's the beginning of a new round, because we didn't get a demon point right there when it went through. But we have defeated that demon right there via the percussive power of, you know, beating it in the face. We've leveled up. That's going to give us an active power and a passive power. This game does have a talent tree. And it's also got kind of like an interesting system they've added that I don't think was in here during the demo as well. We'll take a look at that after we get done with our loot on this side. We got the Necropolis Key. We've got the Okapur Branch. Okay. We've got the used shoes that give us 1% armor, and we've got some gold coins right there. Unfortunately, every now and again with the boots, the background clips through the foreground, and so I think it's like a graphical bug, but if you take them off and put them back on, it seems like the layering works fine, or if you just mouse over your character, it seems to repair itself. So it's like a minor graphical foible, but it's really not that big of a deal. Uh, inside the powers menu over here, we could take a look at our talent tree. For right now, there's not really anything we can take except for satanic power, apparently. Your next attack will be a critical hit and it is an instant ability so we'll go ahead and take that in the passive tree over here we've got the king of hell which will increase our melee crit by five percent or we've got the lord of ether which will increase our magical critical hit i think i don't know how different these trees are but i feel like you get a different tree based on what god you sign up for some of them seem to stay the same, so like Strike of Balaam was on my last run when I was playing as a disciple of Beelzebub, but the Satanic Bomb I think is different, but I don't have like a eidetic memory like some people do, but I do think that the talent tree changes up basically based on which god you decided to serve on a given run. As far as passive points go, we can only go with really King of Hell or Lord of Ether, and since I'm planning on being a melee guy, we'll go with King of Hell. Oh, which is going to give us 5% melee crit. All right, so we've got another spot over here. Let's go look at it. The ritual room seems quiet. There is the corpse of a poor soul. We got some loot. The rags of the whimsical. Okay, I think I could get down with that. So there we go. The rags of the whimsical allow us to have more MP. Oh, there's also a chest piece right here. Since we're a melee guy, I may actually just equip that. Very satisfying gold collection noise. I like the sound of it. There we go. Now we've actually got what looks like an actual waxed leather breastplate on. Looks good. Some kind of like... The vault of offerings must be filled with valuable items, but you can hear growls coming from within. Okay. Okay. I mean, it looks like we didn't strike out. We got the loot without getting omnommed, so that's good. We got some light pants right there. How do those compare to what we have over here? Oh, those are way better. Okay. We've also got a claw on that side that does two to four. Yeah, I could throw that on. Oh, dude, it's like a Freddy Krueger glove. All right. We've also got a patched armband. That looks good as well. What does that do? 1% armor. Okay, we've got a urn of full of spores. The beginning of a fight, you throw toxic powder that puts 5 to 10 poison on all enemies. Oh, nice, dude. Hell yeah. And then the Hunter's Bow of Milgraf. At the beginning of a fight, shoots a poison arrow on a random enemy, deals 1 to 2 damage, and puts 12 poison points on them. I think I'd rather AoE. I do like the idea of support items in this game. It's something that you don't really see in RPGs. In this game, you basically have a skirmishing slot, which is an item that you throw before melee combat is joined, and I actually really like that idea of, like, pelums and javelins and poison powders and things of that nature. Like, I really, really like that idea, because skirmishing was definitely a thing during pretty much all melee portions of, you know, arm, like, in military history. 
All right, so we got to unlock the gate. That just means you click on the lock right there. I do like how interactive the UI is when you're walking through these dungeons and doing various things. Uh, tombs, they might have items or corpses. Ah, it was corpses. We'll still get the loot, but that means we got to go through this fight first. All right. So, what do I want to do here? Your next attack will be a critical hit. Yeah, I'll do that. And then I'm going to see if I can crit this guy down. There was the big crit right there. As you can see, crits are definitely worth it in this title. They hit like a truck. And then we've done nine damage to him right there, and he is now down from the poison that we threw out at the beginning of the combat. And so it has been resolved. We get another favor. Your health regeneration can go up, or you can get free rage points at the beginning of your next fight. Let's go for the health regeneration. I like to keep myself all nice and patched up and not have huge ribbony clumps of my body falling off after every fight. We've got a spear right there. We've got a spear right there. I don't think they're as good as our claw, though, so I'm just going to let them dangle for a little bit. Yeah, I think we're good. Let's check this side. Another tomb. And it looks like this time we didn't get the fight. We just got the loot for free. Oh, right. We've got a cracked axe right there. It's cracked. Watch out. A little bit of cash to put in the stash before we make a dash. The corridor goes down to the necropolis. Death. Great death. Thank you. Without you, nothing would make sense nor have flavor. Thank you for destroying everything. Okay, so it's just some weird ghost that's hanging around singing some kind of Maroon 5 song about death. A room down below where the tombs have been pillaged or opened from the inside. The corpse of a soul. So we've got a snake trainer's flutes. So that allow that just poisons our weapon. Okay. And then a little bit of money. Nothing that I look like I want to swap out for just yet. They used to expose urns in this room. There's a shield? It's not too bad of an idea. And then a patched armband. We already have one of those. I don't think I can wear two of those. Uh, but I will try to put on the shield, I guess, because defense is defense, and it gives us a 10% block chance. So we might as well. I don't know if this red thing actually does anything. A glowing portal. It looks like it leads to a dimension bathed in the furnace. It's impossible to enter. The heat is much too strong. Okay. Do I need, like, a supplementary item to go on into there? It's not a tomb. It looks like a mass grave. Ah, we got a fight, unfortunately. I mean, I guess we're getting XP and stuff. Oh, that guy's got 60 HP. Okay, fair enough. You're scary. Uh, I have four demon points right now, which means I can take on satanic form, which I think is probably a good idea. There we go. And your demon does look different down here in the bottom left-hand corner of this portrait. It changes depending on what demon you worship at the beginning of the game. Because when I was worshiping Beelzebub, I bursted into flames down here in the bottom left-hand corner, and I had two big goat horns. And so this time around, it looks like I've just got that edgy kind of punk rock hair from the Sum 41 phase of music in the late 90s, early aughts. But, you know, for now, it was cool. Uh, let's go ahead, and I'm going to try to crit this dude. 36 sounds nice. Ow. Okay, dodge that one right there. I'll take it. Thank you, RNG. 15 damage out. Poison went ahead and dealt its damage. We get one more attack here. Throw it out to cancel out the big dog. Hopefully we get some serious loot out of here since we fought a guy who was definitely like an upgraded elite. Oh, he dodged me? Huh. Disappointing, but that's life. Life is awesome and disappointing. 45 XP right there. The XP meter continues to fill. And we've got some looty boys to look at. We've got the Mel Medallion of Arcady. Uh, that's the guy's grandson we were looking for. We have a flea-ridden turban. When you receive damage, you gain health, mana, and rage points. Okay, I'll take it. The peasant's hat. Every 10 seconds, you get two mana. What does that one look like? Oh, okay. Cool. What else do we have in here? We've got a dulled sword, a simple pickaxe, some used shoes, and some money. Okay. It looks like a forsaken maze, and the growls do not the growls do not augur well. Alright. 
We got some ghosty boys out here. I think the poison will probably get them. I think. Like, it's not playing. So when I had the javelin, it had an animation of throwing like a javelin hitting the enemies. We are putting the poison on them, but there's no like glass or gas cloud or anything at the beginning of the fight to denote it, unfortunately. We have been victorious. I do like how rapid fire the combat is. I do think if you're going to go for a really simplistic sort of JRPG style of combat, you should make it fast and get it out of the way as fast as possible. Just because, like, I don't know, dude, JRPG combat to me is kind of, like, tired. And so, like, I can tolerate JRPG-styled combat as long as it moves quickly and you get me kind of in and out as rapid as possible. Now, let's go ahead and we've got the amulet that we came for, so I think it's time for us to leave the dungeon and go back to town. My little Arkady, I expected it, and yet this medallion will be the only thing that's left of him. Thank you for taking the risk for me. Take this money. I hope it helps. And that's given us level 3, which means we get another active point, another passive point. There's also a thing called momentum, where, like, if the fights go on for too long, basically everybody triggers this thing called momentum, uh, which is, like, a separate group of slots where you put a bunch of bonuses that basically trigger when momentum goes off. And so you've got things in here from, like, auto-dodging the next attack, uh, instantly getting your next attack, demonic explosions against all enemies. And so anyways, I would recommend that you set these up. I'm just going to go for a free dodge, a free attack, and then a AoE explosion based on how low my health is. Over here, we can get Satanic Inversion. During five seconds, the damage received gives you health instead of lowering it. That's not bad. I definitely think that could flip the script on a couple of different fights. Uh, it looks like we've got the Strike of Balaam, which gives us double damage. Wow. Uh, satanic Bomb, the next time you do a critical hit, the bomb explodes and deals random damage to enemies. It can go up to four times your current level. Yeah, let's do that one because we have a really high crit chance and an ability that allows us to, like, auto-crit. So I feel like that's going to be a really good opener in combat. And then over here, we've got our passives. Taste of Blood, whenever you crit, you get Rage. When your health is lower than 25%, your dodge and critical increase by 5%. Whenever you do a critical hit in melee, you deal bleeding damage that will spread over time. And then whenever you do a critical hit in melee, you slow down the target. 2% of critical hit in melee and with spells. Okay. I'll probably go with the one that puts bleed on things. That sounds cool. Let's do that. Just need that to close out. So we got a couple more quests here. North of the village, a mine has been invested by or infested by a demonic cult. If you believe your testimony, if I believe your testimony, they're coming from those caves. We've already tried to force them out, but we're not up to it. Three of our soldiers have been made prisoners during the assault. If you could save them and see what's going on over there, that would be a good start. Okay. The voice. Are you the one everybody is talking about? The stranger from the west. I'm sorry, I don't mean to disturb you. I'm just a poor blind girl. Are you sure? I'm not bothering you. The ashes of my husband are in an urn in the necropolis. Now the place is corrupted. I think he would rather rest in the village. If you could find that urn, I might have something for you. Oh. Okay, so there's another quest for the necropolis. Uh, this is where you're going to buy and sell gear over here. The game also does seem to have a crafting system. Uh, so from what I've seen, anyways, you can craft gear. Because my last run through the first dungeon... I actually got some crafting materials and things from one of the urns, and I wasn't exactly sure what it was useful for, but it does look like you can forge and craft things at some point. Uh, we could get a new weapon right here. There's the bloody ritual scythe. We've got a guard's lance, or we've got a studded mace. Two to five damage is better than what we're doing right now. I'll probably take it, and then we'll just kind of slot that in real fast. And then I think this guy can have the claw since I'm not planning on swapping into it. You've also got a storage chest because the game is full of lots and lots of loot that's going to be dropping. Uh, so you can check that out. But let's go ahead and see. So there's an abandoned fortress to the north. The Mine of the Demon is where they wanted us to go. And I don't think there's any timeline or anything that you have to worry about for getting these quests done. Like, it doesn't seem like they expire. Ah, this one fills the whole screen. Okay, so that actually steals my resolve a little bit. I feel a lot better. That was what I honestly wanted to see in between the demo and now, and I'm really, really glad that I've seen it. Uh, so anyways, I retract my previous critique. It appears to be just that first dungeon that is not, like, f set to fit the actual aspect radio bo uh, ratio borders. This one appears to have done that. So I retract it. Uh, a small staircase leads to the storeroom. 
Okay, let's go to the storeroom, maybe. The stench from the latrine is repugnant. At least the cultists don't linger. Why am I... The court... There's a dead guy in their toilet? Okay. Creative use of space in order to dispose of bodies. A mythical dried beast organ. Sweet. So that just gives us seven health and seven mana? Hell yeah, brother. I'll take that. That's the good stuff right there. Let's check down over this way real quick. Oh, we got a random battle right there. Okay. A barrel thrower. I'm acting first. I think I'm going to go for that right there. And then I'm going to go for the automatic crit. And then I'm going to smack this guy in the middle. Hey, that wasn't too bad. Hell yeah, that was kind of spicy right there. That got her done. I definitely like how rapid fire and quick the combat is, though. And they've got enough animations in there to make it all look, like, pleasing and good. And so, anyways, I'm, I'm really, really happy with the way that the combat plays out. It feels perfectly fine to me. And I'm honestly not a big fan of turn-based JRPG systems. But I think they've got it down to, like, a, a very, very, you know, back-and-forth ping-pong tit-for-tat that doesn't feel like it lingers and takes forever on, like, the animations and the spell effects and everything. It's just like, bam, 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 done. Like, I actually like that about it. Uh, your first action is instant from now on. Yeah, that sounds good. Let's do that. We've got another club, the one that we just bought, of course. And we've also got a training spear right there, but I don't want it. Uh, let's go down this way and see what we find. There's a demonic shrine. Let's pick up a buff real fast. So we can summon Moloch. We can summon Ball. Or we can summon Asmodeus. Going with Asmodeus. Drinking the blood of my enemies sounds rad. Let's do that one. What did it do for me? I don't think I even got a buff. Maybe it's just like you have a chance of getting a buff. The rattling chains leaves no doubt this zone is used as a prison. Wait, what's that noise? What are you doing here? You've come from Byleth? I am not one of the prisoners you speak of. I am a cultist. When I understood what was happening here, I tried to run in vain. No need to try and free me. It's better if I remain bound, but maybe. If you kill enough of my old peers, I'll be able to help you. Come and see me when it's done. Okay. Ain't no loyalty among the cultists, apparently. I should have taken the health regen, maybe. I think I might be a little overly aggressive when it comes to what we've acquired. That's stairs right there. I don't know if I want to go down them. Supplies of the cultists are stored in this room. There are There must be a lot of people coming and going. Anything good? The oak bark, left hand heavy shield. Yeah, I think that'll do. Perfect. Higher chance to block. I'm always like a sword and board guy. I can't help it. I like sword and board. The miners used to store powder here. The cultists may be using it. Ah, oh, it's a trap. Okay, so for these traps right here, you gotta click all three of the red circles. Uh, before the meter goes down. Otherwise, something bad is going to happen to you. But if you pull it off, you get an XP buff for the remainder of the dungeon or maybe like your next fight. We'll find out after this one resolves right here. Let's go ahead and we will guarantee a crit. We're just going to open with Satanic Bomb like we did last time. Very nice, dude. That's how we sit him down right there. Big dodge on the first go. A little bit of damage taken on the second. Go ahead and put some heat out there. The poison's going to finish him off. And then it looks like we are going to have the last laugh before he gets another attack. And so that's good stuff right there. That allowed us to come in net positive on our health versus where we were before the fight. And so I, I accept... We've got some sewn pants. We've got some, like, random staves and things. So that gives us a bunch of health regeneration, which I'm kind of, like, remiss to let go of. That health regeneration is actually kind of nice. Is this door going to be locked? It's going to be locked, isn't it? Yep. How did I know? Okay. Well, we're not going to be able to jiggle the lock off of its moorings. 
So let's go ahead and I guess we'll cut out to the right and hopefully we can avoid any randomized combats that are going on over here. But honestly, like, I like the game. I think it's very stylized and if you're looking for a dungeon crawling RPG, it approaches it from a different thematic angle. And I think that that's really, really rad, in all honesty. There's not a lot of demonologist games out there. And, like, I dig the art style. I think that the artist that has done this game's actual aesthetic representation is tremendously talented. And I think that's what carries the whole thing. Because the game is honestly really, really simple. Like, it's not a complicated dungeon crawler. But it's the art and how everything is just so wonderfully textured and colored and contoured. And, and like, the usage of, you know, and the usage of contrast. It's very, very... It feels like it's got the trappings of invoking something like Darkest Dungeon, which is another game that I felt like was pretty simple, but was very much carried by its artistic audio-visual stylings. And so anyways, this is Hellslave. I will see you all later. Thank you for stopping on in. My name is Splattercat. I sift through the pile to find what's worthwhile in the world of indie games every single day so you don't have to. Tomorrow I'll have something hot and fresh for you off the chopping block, but for now it's time for me to go. Bye-bye.